are hungry people. They've been standing in a queue for more than an hour waiting for what they've been promised to be the best pizza of their life. I know because I was in the same queue. What they don't realise is that they're going to help us understand uh, some of the important aspects of tessellation and wallpaper groups. Welcome to this video on the beautiful subject of wallpaper symmetry. Now, um, the idea of tessellation is the art and science of covering a surface without leaving gaps or overlaps. And certainly we can cover a surface um, with an ad hoc arrangement of shapes like this, um, uh, but that's not so interesting. What we're more interested in is covering surfaces with a single shape or as few shapes as possible. And if you look carefully, you'll see that not only are the colored shapes mirror images of each other, but the white shapes are actually rotations of those colored shapes. Just a single shape is used to tessellate this surface. We see tessellations and wallpaper groups all over the place. Uh, we see it as decorative coverings on walls, um, the outside of buildings, fencing, roofs, in this case the roof is only still just managing to do the job. We see it in the skins of animals, we see it in fabric, in netting, in weaving. And two-dimensional wallpaper groups uh, give us real clues into the um, role of symmetry in understanding the three-dimensional structure of crystals, a very important application of wallpaper symmetry and tessellation. Here is the entryway to a carport and here is um, what happens when things aren't quite so easy. This is um, actually a road from the ancient city of Pompeii and you can imagine the complication of paving this street with stones that aren't all the same shape. Much easier when we have tiles that are the same shape. So if we just revise what we understand uh, about symmetry groups uh, so far, uh, here is a diamond and uh, this is a point group, in fact a dihedral group. Um, here we extend it in one direction, we have a freeze group, we extend it in two directions and now we have a wallpaper group. We have a point group, a freeze group, a wallpaper group, a point group, a freeze group and a wallpaper group. So how does all of this work? And a great place to start is by looking at regular polygons. I'm sure it's no surprise to you that squares tessellate. Uh, we can easily cover a surface with squares. In fact, squares are related to the origin of the term uh, tessellation. A tessella was a square tile in ancient times and it's where we get a word like tetrahedron. The T-E-S-S -S at the start relates to the number four. So this wall is a beautiful example taking us right back to the origins of the term tessellation. What about uh, triangles? Here are equilateral triangles and yes equilateral triangles also tessellate. But what about pentagons? Let's start adding these and suddenly we see that there's no room and here we're either going to have a gap or an overlap. So pentagons, at least regular pentagons, don't tessellate. What about hexagons, six-sided figures, and regular hexagons do tessellate, and this is the basis for uh, the beehive structure. Circles, alas, circles don't tessellate. They will either create overlaps or leave gaps, depending on how we do it. So the first rule is regular polygons with three, four, and six sides tessellate. Let's look a little closer now at the four-sided figures. So if we begin with squares, we can stretch them into rectangles. We've still got a tessellating structure. What if we twist them a little bit? Um, all those opposite sides are still parallel um, uh, and we still have tessellation. But what about this um, unpromising looking shape? an irregular four-sided structure. Uh, we call this a quadrilateral. All four-sided structures are quadrilaterals. And so far, so good. Can we stretch it? 
yes and so rule number two all quadrilaterals tessellate and a quadrilateral again is anything with four sides now if we then look at triangles um, one interesting thing that we see that will give us a hint is that if we put two triangles together we get a quadrilateral we now know that all quadrilaterals tessellate so um, that helps tie uh, together the parts of the jigsaw and perhaps another part of the explanation of why both triangles why, why triangles um, tessellate if we already know that quadrilaterals do so that's uh, equilateral triangles but what about isosceles triangles well we put them together and we're bound to get um, another uh, quadrilateral and so of course these will tessellate scalene triangles yes another quadrilateral so of course these will tessellate now we haven't found our square yet and um, we can produce that by uh, two right angled triangles uh, and the right angled triangles must have two equal sides there's our square what about a rectangle well a right angled triangle with unequal sides and there's our rectangle so um, rule number three all triangles tessellate so far, all quadrilaterals tessellate, all triangles tessellate. Now, why is this so? Well, this is where the pizzas come in. Imagine that we divide this in two for 200 people, but then two others join us, and now we need four equal parts. And to make them equal, uh, we end up with 90 degrees in the middle. And 90 times 4 is 360 degrees. That's the um, angle in a circle. Now, this also happens to be the internal angle of a square. And so this gives us a hint as to why squares tessellate. How does this relate to a triangle? Well, the internal angle of a triangle is 60 degrees. And what happens if we divide our pizza up into 60 degree pieces? Sure enough, we now get six equal parts. So everybody's happy. Everybody's got the same uh, size piece of pizza. What about hexagons? The internal angle of a hexagon is 120 degrees and um, if we divide our pizza into 120 degree pieces now we've got three equal parts but again everybody's happy. What if we think about a pentagon? The internal angle of a pentagon is 108 degrees not such a pretty number and let's see what happens if we divide the pizza up this way. So far so good, but the next piece leaves us with an impossibly small leftover. 108 times 3 is 324, which doesn't quite get us to 360, and adding another 108 is going to go way over. So somebody is going to be unhappy, someone gets an unfair piece of the pie, and uh, pentagons do not tessellate. So here's a summary of all of this. Um, the triangle works, the square works, the hexagon works, the pentagon doesn't work, and to keep things very simple, nothing bigger than a hexagon works if we're talking about regular structures. So the internal angle must be a factor of 360 degrees. Now, if we're talking about irregular structures, things change, and here are some irregular um, pentagons that do tessellate um, and uh, we'll deal with them later in the course um, but the most important thing for us to understand at this stage is that with regular structures it's just triangles squares and hexagons that will do the job for us speaking of hexagons if we start with this hexagonal lattice and stretch it um, here are some now irregular but still symmetric hexagons they will also work but there's plenty of hexagons that don't. Other things that we can do with hexagons, we can invert two of the sides. Now we have a concave hexagon um, and this will tessellate. We can also reverse uh, one of the rows and we get a different pattern. Now from this, we can also then build this shape, which has eight sides. It's an irregular octagon um, and this tessellates, but remember that uh, regular, regular octagons don't tessellate. So our rules so far, squares tessellate, triangles tessellate, hexagons also tessellate. And as we'll see as we go on, uh, tessellation is all about squares, triangles and hexagons. 
Now, to give you an example of how important this principle is, uh, this pattern that we saw earlier in the video is actually all constructed from squares. If we begin, begin with a square and then start cutting and pasting, we take a little corner from here, put it down there, little corner from here, put it down there, and then we have this shape, and here we go, we can tessellate. So this idea of cutting and pasting is central to all of the most interesting tessellations, and that includes the great work of the artist M.C. Escher. And uh, finishing off with our pizza, this is the reason that um, when we sat down for our pizza, we decided we'd have one each. Far too difficult to think about cutting one of these pizzas uh, exactly into quarters. And was it the best in the world? Well, once the coronavirus is over, you guys will all just go and have to test it for yourselves. Until next time, bye for now.